Hey, this is Janet from Pearl Together, and I thought I'd do my little intro outside. It's a super nice day towards the end of August. The other reason I'm sitting on my porch is because my kids are in live lessons with their virtual online teachers. I mean, the teachers are virtual. The teachers are real people. <laughs> but um, anyway, they're using the schoolroom and the Wi-Fi, and so I, I kind of need to be a little quieter. So I thought, well, I'll just go outside. It's a beautiful day. Okay, so what follows is uh, part one of the s uh, felted clog slipper tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to get through knitting just the, the sole, the first six rows. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can make the increases. The M1 designation on the pattern, which is make one. Um, so we'll go through that and then you'll be ready to hop on to part two. All right, we've completed our cast on of however many stitches you're doing, depending on the size that you're doing. I cast on 63, and as always, I double counted that I have, in fact, cast on the correct number. And now we're ready to start row number one. Um, I will preface row number one by saying there is a note on the first page of the pattern indicating that um, the author of the pattern suggests that you do increases that are done between two stitches here rather than using one stitch to make two. Um, my only, and, and in theory that's awesome, but my only issue with that is when you're on the foundation row or the cast on row, um, there's nothing in between to lift up and make into another stitch. So for this first row, I'm going to do the knit through the front and back method and then we can do a lifted increase later on and I'll show you that so just follow along slowly with me don't panic um, so the first thing the row number one says knit one to make one or K1 M1 so we knit one by simply going in as if knit a regular stitch wrap counterclockwise but before you pull off the stitch as you normally would the next stitch is to make one so we're gonna go around the back and knit into the back of that loop. Then we'll pull it off. So what we've done in effect is we've made two stitches out of one. So you can see here, this is the knit one, that's the make one. Okay, let me take that out and I'll show it to you again. Okay. So you're going to knit one, make one. You go in, just like a normal knit stitch, wrap counterclockwise, pull, through, but not taking it all the way off just yet. And then curl your needle back around behind and knit into the back of that stitch. Okay, see how that looks? Can you? Okay. And then we're going to wrap counterclockwise again and pull that through, then take the whole thing off. Okay, so that's a knit one, make one. Um, then we're going to knit a bunch more depending on your size. but it's several more, so we'll go ahead and speed through that. Um, if you're talking to someone or you get interrupted, like I'm talking to you and I'm not really counting how many stitches I'm knitting, I can look back and see the increase, my new stitch that I've made, because it has a horizontal bar. See that right there? So that's my make one. That's the one I made. So knit one, make one, and then I'm going to knit. In my case, I'm knitting 30. Maybe you're knitting 27. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now I've knitted my 30. Now the next part of row number one says M1, K1, M1, or make one, knit one, make one. Now I've knitted my 30, but I need to make one. Well, I don't have anything to make one with because if I don't have anything to lift up to make a stitch with. So what I need to do is go back and use the stitch that I've just completed in order to make another. So if you'll notice, see the loop? underneath I'm gonna poke my needle in right there and if I were to just take that out then I've undone that stitch I knitted so you can see how to do that so if I was knitting that back that's the end of my 30 and now I'm gonna curl around and knit into the back part of that loop to do my make one okay so that's my make one now the instructions say knit one make one so I'm gonna do that all in this next stitch so knit one don't take it off, go around the back and knit into the back of that same loop or same stitch. Okay, so now you can see I have my make one, knit one, make one. 
Okay. Now I'm going to knit a few more. In my case, it's another 15 or 16. I'll have to look. All right, now I've come to the part in row one where my ins instructions indicate W and T, which means wrap and turn. So what I want to do is I'm simply wrapping my yarn around the base of this next stitch on my left needle. And that allows me to turn my work and start knitting back the other way. So those are called short rows, meaning I'm not knitting the entire length of this row. I, I'm shortening it up. I'm going to here and stopping short and going back. So to do that, I want to bring my yarn through the middle of my work so it's coming out the front as if I'm going to knit. Okay, so that's leave that there for a moment. Then I'm going to slip off this next stitch. I'm slipping it off as if to purl. So go into the stitch as if you're going to purl and simply take it off. Then you want to take your yarn back through the middle. Okay, so now you're, you're working on wrapping the base of that stitch. Then you're going to take this stitch back off and place it back onto the left needle. And, the, and I'm doing it the same way. I'm putting it back the same way I took it off so that I don't twist it. Then you're going to turn your work over. Here's the turn part. Okay, so we're doing the wrap and that's the turn. Now you just want to take your yarn back through the middle so you can get ready to knit again. And you can see that you've wrapped the base of that stitch all the way around. Okay, so that's the wrap and turn. Now I'm gonna knit back a whole bunch more. Okay, if you're going along and you're talking and not really paying attention because you have 25 or 30 stitches to knit or you lose count, you can simply look back here and you can see where we wrapped that stitch and started back. You can also tell that this has more than one row here. And then there's a gap where, because when we wrapped the stitch, it pulled it close to the rest of the work. So you can see this was the one we wrapped and then we're, knitting on two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen so i've done eighteen so far so if you get interrupted as i often do you can go back and check that way okay we've knitted our way back and now the pattern's going to ask us to wrap and turn again so i'll show you that one more time so we're going to bring our yarn up through the center so it's coming out the front slip the next stitch as if you're going to purl that prevents it from twisting Take your yarn back through the middle and then simply put the stitch back on the left needle. Okay, turn your work and take your yarn back through so you can conti continue on knitting. Okay, so we've turned around and we're gonna knit back, I don't know, 14 or 15 stitches depending on your size. All right, now the pattern asks us to make one, knit two. All right, so we're gonna, now this is where I'm gonna show you, you have the option of doing the knitting through the front and back loop again as before. But now that we have our, our couple of rows underneath us, we can do the lifted increase that the author would prefer that we do to start with. And it's actually much easier. Oliver, my cat, has decided to join us, so he will likely be troublesome, but will persevere nevertheless. So if I want to do a lifted increase, the author recommends that you take do you see this bar? Wait, okay, Oliver, I know that you see that. Okay. The bar underneath here is the yarn between the two stitches of the previous row. Let me just move the cat. Okay. So this bar that's underneath here, I can simply lift that up and create a stitch with it and just knit right into that as if it were a stitch. But you see how that also creates kind of a hole. I personally don't care for that. Um, you can do that if you choose, it's pretty easy. But since we're kind of doing garter snitch where we're knitting back and forth both directions, we have these convenient little pearl bumps. These are the wrap, this is the backside of our previous row. If I wanna make one, I can simply go pick that up right there and make a stitch out of that and that lessens the appearance of a hole. See there, that's much cleaner in my opinion. So let me show you that again. We are at the point in our pattern where it says make one knit two. So if it's garter stitch and you have a purl row beneath, I just pick up that purl bump and knit right into it. Make one, knit two. I'll show you that again. Because now the pattern asks me to make one 
knit one, make one. So I'm going to knit into, pick up the purl bump below and knit into that. That's a make one, knit one, and I'm going to pick up the purl bump below and that's another make one. Okay, now I'm going to knit two and make one. Picking up, oops, pick up the purl bump, knit right into it, and that's a make one. Okay, so that was the center section, and now I'm going to knit either 23, 26, or 29, depending on your pattern. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll carry on to the last bit of this row. We're nearing the end of row number one, and we have two stitches left. The reason I stopped here is because I know that at the very end of row number one, the instructions tell me to make one knit one. So I'm going to have to make one using the second to the last stitch. So I'm going to knit into it like normal, and I'm going to use it for my make one. Now, keep in mind, we can't do the purl bump pickup because we don't have a row beneath us. So that's why we had to do that there at the end. Now, once you're done with the row number one, you don't have to worry about knitting into the front and the back of the loop any longer because you will have these rows underneath that will allow you the convenience of picking up those purl bumps or picking up the, the horizontal bar between the stitches if you prefer. All right, so row two is just knitting straight back across. That's easy. That is nice that the even rows are just straight up knitting. Gives you a little break from following the instructions quite so closely. Um, so, okay, this has been kind of the revised step one, revised part one of the tutorial. Please don't hesitate to ask questions in the Facebook group or in the YouTube comments. Um, I will be deleting the first attempt at the part one tutorial. So um, if you never saw that, then great, disregard. Go with this and uh, knit on. Remember, you're the boss of your knitting. Um, I'll be uploading part two here shortly. As soon as I get the sole complete, then I'll show you how to join your color and carry on. Okay, see you in a bit.